Welcome to Covenant Keepers Ministries. Today is uh, Thursday, June the 27th, 2024. And we started this week by sharing what Paul told the churches in Lystra, Iconium, and, and Antioch in Acts 14, 22. He went to them, confirming the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, inherit the kingdom of God. And so after that, we started making this list from the following books in the Bible that talk to us about the end of time, the last days, so that we'll be ready and prepared and not just be gullible when somebody starts telling us they heard from God and they tell us something that doesn't line up with the scripture. So I'm not going to give you every verse in all these books that I'm just going to lay out in front of you again so you get this... These are places where we find discussion of the end times. Daniel, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 5, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 3, Hebrews 10, 2 Peter chapter 2 and 3, and obviously the book of Revelation. So I want to read again from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9 through 12, because I've just been spinning off of that, even though I did take time to read one day uh, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7. Here's what it says in 2 Thessalonians 9, or excuse me, 2, 9 through 12. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan, displaying in all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs, and wonders and in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refused to love the truth and to be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. That is a huge warning right there. If you refuse to believe the truth, but delight in wickedness, you will be condemned. There's still time for you to repent. There's still time for you to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And today's the day to do it. Don't put it off till tomorrow. So I've been walking through this list of things that are found in the references I've already given you, not going back and reading all those I'm not going to read the whole book of Daniel. I mean, we couldn't do that in, in, an, in a half hour, probably an hour. We just, we just do these short video devotionals, but I'm giving you what's in these verses. Check it out yourself. And I'm continuing the list. People refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Just read that one out of Second Thessalonians 2. God himself sends a powerful delusion so that those who refuse the truth will believe a lie. Their eyes get blinded by Satan, but the Lord sends the delusion and they believe a lie. Terrible times are coming. Terrible. And what happens is people end up loving themselves and they love money. Want some more money. Greed. But loving themselves. I read this out of 2 Timothy 3 to you. People will be boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, brutal, fierce in the, in the King James, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And we're warned, have nothing to do with them. Did you hear that? If you see these kind of people, have nothing to do with them. And then we're warned in these texts I gave you, this list of texts, not to throw away our confidence, Hebrews 10. Don't throw away your confidence and trust in God just because all this is happening. You see and all the evil abound around you. Don't give up on God. Trust in him. He's given you hope. False prophets are going to introduce 
destructive heresies. Be careful. Be careful. Get into the word. Study the word. Test it by the word. Teachers will exploit you with stories they make up. <laughs> I've watched some guys that I know personally tell stories, claim they were theirs, and they were not a part of it at all. Scoffers are going to come. And they're everywhere, aren't they, today? In fact, I've been, I've been watching some things that, oh, my goodness, my alert is on full, full blown. These people are talking about God and using his name and, and in, a, in a respectful way, but living in adulterous, sinful ways. And then another thing in the list, everything will be destroyed. Everything will be destroyed. You're holding on to stuff right now. It's going to go away. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is the word of God. It's not, I didn't make this stuff up, okay? Now let me read 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 and verse 13. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. Praise God. Not once in all these verses do we read anything about an end time revival. Better than good prospering, evil abounds. If you hear anything to the contrary, it's false prophecy. God did promise as long as there is earth, there will be seed time and harvest. The Bible promises that the end will be just like the days of Noah before the flood. There'll be birth, marriage, death, all kinds of business transaction. But evil will abound more and more because of the rejection of the truth. But nowhere in conjunction with end time teaching in the word of God is there any mention of revival. And if you start hearing more revival talk again, because it spins its cycle, it ought to cause us to wonder the source of that talk since end time scripture, no end time scripture relates to revival. So either we're not living in the last days or God's not speaking when others are sharing their vision and prophecy concerning end time revival. I'm giving you this so you'll be on full alert. Now it's up to you to run with it. Check it in the Word. Study it. Prepare yourself. So, Father, we've done our best to share the truth. Now we rest it in the hands of your followers who will teach others also so that we'll be ready. I'm thankful the Spirit of God's preparing us so we won't be caught unawares and will not be led astray. I thank you for it. Praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a fantastic day.